Yes, no marks for guessing who our guest <laughs> is. Well, we couldn't hide it forever, could we? <laughs> Sheo Kukuti. He is the youngest son of Afrobeat pioneer Fela Anikulapu Kuti. He has spent most of his life preserving and extending his father's political and musical legacy as the leader of the Egypt 80. That's yeah. quite an ex inheritance, right? Uh, I didn't inherit the Egypt 80, though. Okay. Most people say she inherited Egypt 80, but I didn't, you know, because I've been in the band since I was eight. Okay. Touring with my dad, uh, after, you know, like, because you used to always take us on the road. And as a kid, I just saw his life, like, man, this is what I want to do. I mean, this, has to be, <laughs> this has to be the easiest job really? in the world. You know, I was a kid. What did I know? Oh. You know, you go on stage, you sing your songs, everybody loves you. I know my daddy used to only get paid in cash. My daddy used to do bands. So after every show, they had to bring all the money backstage like this. Everywhere we full of money, women. I'm like, what do you mean? What else? That's the life. life. <laughs> I Your father like, wouldn't, be, he wouldn't have been happy if he was still alive now. No cash. No, uh, cash. no fella would have had cash. We would have opened POS in our house. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure. One person with cash would have been my dad. I would just go open POS. Because of KK, see? <laughs> I'll have bought private jets by now. Oh, really? From my POS business. <laughs> You know, there's something that I find particularly fascinating about um, what you do on your website. That in spite of the political and uh, musical legacy of your dad, you've also chosen to infuse our cultures into your music and into the things that you do. Why do I personally find that exciting? Because I look at Nigeria's music scene now, the transition between the 70s music, which was a lot local, high life and the rest, to the 80s, which was mostly pop, the foreign yeah. pop, to the 90s, which was Nigerians now taking over, but more pop, now to this current generation that we have doing Afro pop and the rest of it. I, I'm looking for the Africanness, all the cultures and, and all of that in most not that it doesn't exist, but in most of them, it doesn't seem to exist. What's your take on that? Uh, uh, to be honest, it didn't used to. But I mean, um, there's this new young artist, Shea Vibes or something. If you see his video, that boy director shot, very cultural video, you know. You know, to the extent that he was reciting incantations with Juju in his hand, you know, part of the video, what they call Juju, you know. I don't know what Juju is, you know, what they call <laughs> Juju, you know. You know, so for me, the young people are beginning to see that they cannot out-white the Europeans. Mm. Out-white the white? Yeah, <laughs> they can't. You know, because, but the mistake we made is that in the early 2000s, we allowed foreigners come to dictate to us what African music should sound like. Mm. You know, I don't want to name names, but you know, these companies that project so-called African music to the world, mm. you know, they dictated the kind of content. And these companies are also owned by many of these luxury brands, just as they do in America. So they use the music to promote the things that really make them money, which is their fashion lines, their cars, you know, all these luxury brands. Mm -hmm. You know, so our music was inclined to also sell these things. But I think as young African people are beginning to come more into themselves, you know, it will not only be visual mm -hmm. when they want to be cultural, it will also become vocal as well. Mm -hmm. So it's time. I think we are growing with our nation. <laughs> How does it make you feel that most of the music that is selling all over the world now, and I mean music from here that is selling all over the world, is called Afrobeats, <laughs> which has infused Afrobeat into it? which was started by right. yours truly, Fela. Fela himself. I think it was his marketing. If you look at dancehall music, when it started, it was called Raga. Mm. 
so you could sound like reggae, so that people could know where it's coming from. Our music, you know, even though it has um, created big buzz in the world, you know, we're still becoming, we're not yet a household mm. name in the globe, you know. We are still looking for our music to start breaking markets where they have their own pop sound already. You know, and until you start doing that, your pop music is not doing anything. You know, the way Drake, for example, releases an album is number one in Korea, number one in Japan. You know, our music can't do that yet because Korea has K-pop. You know, Japan is keen into that. You know, in Brazil and all these places. So we are still working on that. I think Afrobeats is the way to market this to the world, you know. So I don't, I don't really don't see... I, I have to tell you something, Sean. Yeah. The fact that our songs have Afro in it <laughs> is enough. Is enough. <laughs> For me, is enough, right? White, 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 that has Afro in it. And they have beats. For me, it's enough identity. Yeah. Because... If we are looking for, I mean, we've been asking ourselves for eons, what do we have to give to the world? We had, now we're talking about having movies. But what's selling more now seems to be the music. The music. You can't recite uh, the lyrics or the lines of a movie on the road. But you can recite that of a music, of a song. Yeah, the like music is it. different for you know, like that's why I always say to fellow artists, we cannot believe the lies of the oppressor when they tell us, you know, uh, you can make any music you want. You know, look at uh, Anna Swastika making violent movies. Is that the reason why people are killing themselves? Mm, the power of music is not the same as the power of a film. Mm. For example, your favorite film, you watch it maybe twice a year, three times a year max. You watch your favorite movie. But your favorite song, even when it is not playing, you are singing it to yourself. It's mm -hmm. a mantra. There's a spiritual connection with music and Most human certainly. beings. Mm -hmm. It becomes a chant, like a becomes meditation. It be, begins to shape your personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, how then do we use that for conscientizing Nigerians or Africans? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about owning the identity and using that identity to let the world to know. pass a message. Yes. <laughs> People have asked me this question a lot, and I always say to everybody that we put too much pressure on artists. You know, when we say, you know, we expect them to use their music for, you know, artists must change the world. We cannot change the world alone. But many have done. Yeah, they have, they have tried. This is the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's true, I'm from that lineage. I'm Felason, for Christ's sake, you know. But Mali, you know. They have tried, but the problem is, if the engineer is not willing to engineer a new world, if the bankers are not willing to bank a new world, bankroll a new world, if the civil service servants are not willing to service a new world, if the journalists are not willing to write a new world, there's so little that music can do. If the professors are not willing to teach a new world, you know, so the musicians can just try and inspire. We are there to inspire. But, if, but hear this, hear this. If other social sciences are not willing to change the world as well, then music is just... Hear this. Your father did his fair bit. Yes. Many, many years ago. Yes. And the songs that he... The things he said in his songs, those many, many years ago, mm -hmm. are still being said today. Yes. Mm -hmm. His songs are still being played today yeah. because his message is still relevant. And I wish that Nigeria has moved past that. Mm. I wish that the engineers in Nigeria have truly been inspired by that message to engineer a new country. Mm. You know so that you, they, you wish that those things were not still relevant yeah, today. Exactly. I wish that, as Fela has spoken, it's really, as I said, all the social sciences and the experts in this field are the ones we must change the world. It's not just music. Fela can sing all he's singing. If the engineers in Nigeria still betray that message, then it's just a message. If the bankers, the civil servants, the lecturers, the professors, the journalists, if they betray that message, then it's just that. I agree with you. But you can't remonstrate the power of music. No, I can't. It, that's what I'm saying. It inspires. It, it, it <laughs> has enough, not just invocative, but provocative power. Yes. It can get people to do stuff. Yes. Especially the masses. Especially the masses. But now we need the professional class to be inspired above their own interests. 
We need them to be inspired above their own interests. I'm not even talking about our politicians and the big elites that own everything. I'm saying we the gears that keep the machine turning. We the people. We the people. <laughs> okay. Let me okay. ask you this. Because I, 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 I see a trend between you and your dad and, of course, all of you in the family who are into music. How into significant? the arts. Into the arts. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> How important is education? Oh, wow. I see that in what you're saying and the deep persuasion with which you're saying it. How important is education? And I'm not just talking about academics. You, I'm pretty yes. sure you understand exactly yes, what yes. I'm talking about. How important is education in making conscious or conscientizing music? If education is understanding reality, you know, then it is the most important in making conscious music. Mm. And I'm not talking about the indoctrination we go through in formal education. You know, because I say to my friends all the time, I can't believe we live in Nigeria. You go through 12 years of second, primary and secondary school, and in your classroom, you never hear the word checkpoint, police checkpoint. You never hear it in your classroom. Nobody discusses it with you. How to navigate police checkpoints. Well, maybe it's different Something. now. Maybe it's different now because it was just recently I found out that my daughter in JS1 or so at the time, mm -hmm. they now have a subject called security or something like that. Uh, well, I, 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 I'm, I'll check. Because it's important. You know, because when I was growing up, 12 years, I didn't hear uh, injustice, oppression, police brutality. None of these things were spoken of in class and I went through and I'm educated. You know, so what well, you know, if we remove the indoctrination, you know, education of just understanding our reality is the most important thing in making any kind of um, conscious music. You know, let's, let's talk about you for a bit. We've only got two and a half minutes to go. How did you manage? Because you you said you began to sing with your father when you were eight years. You were a baby. Mm -hmm. So you were singing with your father touring with him yeah. and yet going to school yes yes storing was mostly in the summer so okay. school was on holiday okay so i i could go on tour with my dad but even when there was school my dad would write a letter to the school and i have to catch up when i got back wow yeah yeah i worked really hard as a kid you know i'm telling you I, so you've I mean, been working since you were eight since i was eight i told a friend of mine you know that i've been 32 years working non-stop so nobody should be surprised if i retire at the age of 48 or something you know and i'm done you know, I'm just living in my house, raising my children, like, done with work. <laughs> Every day since I've been eight, I've been working all my life. <laughs> wow, interesting. So, we have just about two minutes, as Alera said. What do we expect from you? This is such a short time that we have you. You're going to have to promise to come back. I will, I will. Uh -huh. I will. Anytime. <laughs> what, what, what should Nigerians be expecting, your fans all over the world, should be expecting from you this year? Wow, this is a big year for us. I mean, we just released a... Uh, a track with Janelle Monet yesterday. It's doing really well called Float. Okay. Please stream it, everybody, if, you, if you're watching. Uh, okay. My album is dropping this year. I have a big legendary producer making it. I don't want to drop names yet. We're going to announce soon. I have some movies coming out. Whoa. Yeah, it's a big year oh, for me. Geez. So I'm really looking forward, you know, to how it unravels. Well, let me let me play the, <laughs> play the role of a manager right now. She's my artist. She's an actress. <laughs> Yes, so, we'll, we'll find you in Roma. Don't worry. I'll, yes. The casting director no, no, will to, reach out. to talk to me. No, we'll reach out the directly manager. to the actor. What do you mean? <laughs> mommy, mommy and son. Mommy and son. Mommy and son business. <laughs> mommy and son limited. <laughs> okay. What's up? Uh, is that you? Yeah, that was me. That was Whoa. Me. This was during the launch of um, Fela's Confession Breakbone. I used to open the shows for my dad, you know. Wow. That was me swagging away, you know. Oh, my God. How old were you at this point? I was probably like nine. I'm wow. a little kid, you know. Look at the dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is very Good to have you with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much pleasure. for coming. My pleasure. We wish you all the best since you say you're going to have a very busy year. Yeah, it's a big year. We wish you all the best. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Ah, Sheung Kuti brings to an end sunrise for today. And don't forget, next Saturday is election Saturday. Election day. Okay. Hmm. By this time, you should have... What time is it now? You should have voted. Yes. Hmm. Or be on the line. Okay. I will, the, all opportunities will be open for you to express yourself to us, to let you know what's happening where you are, take pictures, videos, whatever it is sent to us, we'll put on air so the authorities can be aware. Let's get it right.
once more because I can't say we've been getting it wrong all the while. We've make, made progress, even though in inches. And just in case your eyes are asking, yes, we are going to vote when we finish work See, next week. There you have it. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for spending the, the last three hours odd with us on Sunrise. I'm Alera Idu wishing you a very good weekend. And I hope to see you next week. I'm um, Ayo Makinde. You can check your polling unit now if you haven't. Bye for now.